Welcome to Pharmacy View, technology and pharmacy business podcast series, where we provide regular interviews with pharmacists and key industry people within the Australian pharmacy and associated industry. In each podcast, we look to discuss aspects of pharmacy operation and how technology is improving or interacting with each guest's current role or pharmacy-related business. I'm your host, Scott Carpenter, and today's guest is sponsored by Shopfront Solutions, leading the way in digital marketing and communications, providing a cloud-based platform for pharmacies to manage all of their digital messaging and print-based collateral. For more information on the Shopfront Solutions digital platform, simply go to the website at shopfrontsolutions.com.au. I'm talking today with Chris Swift from AP Sales. Welcome, Chris. Thanks, Scott. Thanks for having me. This is my first ever podcast. Excellent. So oh, well, I'm a bit excited. Well, if, if you're anything like me, you'll uh, you'll find that once you've done one, it's actually a bit of fun and you, you'll probably get a bit more involved with it. So Chris, you and I have had the opportunity to work and be associated t- together in the pharmacy industry for close to 20 years. I think I worked out potentially between the two of us, we'd have close to 50 years pharmacy experience. But for anyone listening today that may not know you, who is Chris Swift? Oh, it is quite scary when you do think about the duration of time that you were spending in one industry. And it's funny when you start off, you never really think that's going to be you. You just think this is what I'm doing for now, but I'll, something else will come up. But I have had a great time in the pharmacy industry. I started by default, really. I started with Bullivant's natural health products, which some of you might not know as Bullivant's, but nature's own vitamins, natural nutrition vitamins and bioorganics. And it was owned by Vaughan Bullivant at the time. And I always wanted to be into sales, but I love vitamins because it was always new products. So I got into that. And then in Victoria, that range was never available in pharmacy. It was only available through health food stores. So they were keen to expand their distribution into pharmacy. And I was the newest member of the team and didn't have many relationships with health food customers. So they said, do you want to do that? And I was like, yes. And it was an amazing journey. We did our first pharmacy fair at the exhibition center at the time and we were absolutely run off our feet you know I can't remember how many inquiries we had but we had an amazing time you know rolling out nature's own vitamins across you know all the all the key and entrepreneurial pharmacists in the state at that time and you know the journey went on from there and then that business was sold to folding and then I had some time with folding, did a bit of work in the wholesale team there in Victoria, a bit of work in the retail team. And from there, I went into the Terry White team. So folding had a partnership with with Terry White Chemists, and they were keen to expand nationally at that point, having a very strong Queensland based. And I took over the the role of network network development, I guess you would call it. But you know, the role was to grow the Terry White network across the country, which I did for twenty years and had an absolute blast and then i so since leaving there i did some work with sigma on the whole life retail pharmacy health food model which is a very good one and very exciting and quite innovative and then now i've been doing sale of business and, and national business development for ap sales as well as doing a bit of mediation and commercial dispute resolution stuff privately in, in your own business. Look, yeah, Chris, that's great. And that's a, a really wide expanse. I guess from a technology point of view, I could be a year or two out here, but would almost suggest you started this role pre-mobile phones, definitely pre-internet. <laughs> yeah, I think if I remember rightly, we, we had a communal mobile phone. It was a massive brick. And whoever was doing, whoever was doing their sales work in the country was uh, presented with the brick, um, <laughs> the old yep. Motorola. So yes, it's interesting. From that perspective, and uh, the other thing is, you were kind of mentioning some of that, and uh, I'm sure some people listening today who who know you well, I often joke with people that I've known for some time that uh, some of the events and experiences and activities that we've either seen or been part of, we could we could write a book one day, and and there'd probably be some people out there that would hope we never write that book. Oh yeah, oh, some amazing times, some amazing, you know, really really rewarding, but incredibly challenging to you know. When anyone says you're going to a conference, having worked on things behind the scenes, it's amazing how hard all the work is behind the scenes on your building an agenda that's actually going to be really compelling to the audience, making sure they get as much value out of it as possible and, you know, go home from the conference telling people it was really worth it. 
implementing yep. some of the new initiatives. I mean, there were some really exciting initiatives launched, you know, yep. rolled out over time. So I um I was always exhausted at the end of a lot of those, but they were really good fun. <laughs> From that perspective, yeah. And and certainly um if we just refer to our Terry White time, you know, you and I were part of the ERP team that, that saw the complete, you know, revamp of what what was a, a, a mishmash of um systems and data in into one single, I guess, uh, ERP unit, which was a yeah. quite an interesting time. So yes, and you know, just big projects from there as well. So, you know, especially when you start to factor in, you know, the size of a pharmacy ranging, the pricing structures, the you know, it's a, it's it's a complex retail model. Yeah, yeah, and again, you know, from a, a small pharmacy that could be carrying you know eight thousand SKUs up to a large pharmacy that could have a database of thirty five thousand SKUs, you know, fifteen thousand of them that will never be used again. But it's all big data that's, I guess, you know, churning away behind the scenes. So. Absolutely. I still think a lot of my friends that aren't in pharmacy are quite amazed at the at the variation in stores. You know, the, the some the, the turnover in the small ones is, and the turnover in the large ones. It's, they're still quite amazed that, that some stores you know, do that volume. But it's yeah. a, that's the industry we're in. It's great. Yeah, and and I think the other thing I've seen over time too is, uh, you know, I've always. I guess had in the back of my mind that you know pharmacy brands and groups would you know consolidate, 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 but it just doesn't seem to work that way. You know, just when you see something like a Sol Patterson's, which is I think now only probably half a dozen branded pharmacies left, which which was quite a big, strong brand in, in its day, you you find that there's another group of pharmacies popped up with another new brand, and and there's a couple of what I guess would be smaller brands around the countryside. I'm I'm seeing. Um, have employed business development managers are actually in growth mode again at the moment and and brands that have actually expanded across the country whereas they might have just been originally in the state absolutely there's, there's definitely a lot of the the cross-border expansion and the appetite to you know partner up with people in different states to get growth and have a brand you know nationally represented so it's there's always something happening and you know the, the there's, you know, like I say, a lot of variation in retail models as well now with some being discount focused, some being service focused, some being health focused. So it's, uh, there's, there's a lot of choices for, for a young pharmacist or, a, or a, an independent pharmacy at the moment to, to partner up with some different groups, different retail options and, and propositions. Around the place, yeah, and I think the other thing from a, again, if I keep just to pull us back to the technology point of view as well, is that you know I, I sometimes feel not well, sorry is probably not quite the right word, but uh, you know the life of a uh, of a dispensary point of sale company like a Fred or a Minfos, you know when when they're dealing with all of these different groups and, and different sizes, and you would probably see this as a, as a good lead into the AP sales um, perspective, is that just trying to transfer data or trying to transfer accounts. For, you know, through the through the purchase and sale of businesses, is, it would be a real challenge. Oh, absolutely. I think one of the well, one of the reasons I loved and and made the decision to join in with AP Sales was because of the the quality of the the IT platform. That's really yep. been you know one of the the points of difference that that was appealing to me. And I think that the strength and the system, you know, coming from a, a franchise model that's very systems and process focused, you really do see the strength of those things in in different roles and businesses that you work with over time and seeing them you know turned from systems and processes in a in a way of doing business but actually supported by the, an IT platform is really just the key piece to making it successful and I think if you read through all the journals and so on now in how retail stores are performing and how the the covid has impacted you know the guys that have had really strong IT systems have really been the ones that have been able to adapt quickly from a bricks and mortar model to an online model, back to a bricks and mortar model, but still have a strong online model. Model, yep. And, and that's going to be the how they evolve, you know, going forward. Because some of these innovations that came in over a, a COVID period have been so successful, I, I don't think they're going to be able to stop them. I think the consumer is now going, well, that's the new normal. Yeah, and look, a, a really good example of that that I'm working with a couple of clients, different clients, where six to twelve months ago, you know, if if I wanted to send someone a website, I'd send them, you know, the www you know web link. Uh, today, I'm actually doing uh, digital forms and digital documents, which actually include a QR code. And and why? Because we've all been so well trained, and and, and you know, to scan a QR code that it's actually become a bit more of the norm. So that whole change in that period is is I think done some amazing things, including in pharmacy. So Talk to us a bit about AP Sales. Yeah. Who are they? Where are they? And, and 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 what's your involvement with them? Well, AP Sales is Australian, is Australian Pharmacy Sales, Australian or APG and AP Group, and the 
website, apgroup.com.au, where we feature all the, the products and services of the business. There's the, the primary part of the business is pharmacy sale of business. Yep. We also have legal support, legal advice, leasing assistance. We also have you know, help with, with pharmacists in compiling finance applications for the buying of businesses. So it's a very extensive operation. The representation is across every state in Australia. And the the platform is really a fully online-based system. So interested pharmacists can register. You need to be a, a pharmacist to be approved to get full access. We do have some advisors that we give limited access to okay. where, they can, where they can view listings. But if you're a registered pharmacist and you're a member of the site, you get full access to the, the data room. Yep. And that is the the key to it. I think historically, pharmacy sale of business has been done through a smaller amount of information, some P&Ls, some leasing information compiled into a an information pack. This system is a full data room, so we're enabled us to actually pack a whole lot more information and you can put the complete documents as opposed to a capturing a summary and information pack so people can view you know, far more information from a vendor's position, all of their information is kept secure. So people aren't able to download it. Yep. So it's protected. You can't, we don't have a policy of, you know, emailing, you know, confidential documents and attachments around so that we can, because you're registered users, we have a weekly report that we get that shows who's, who's had a look at what site okay. and then helps us assess who is interested. So we can do a really detailed report back to a, a vendor on the on the popularity of the site, the popularity of their business. And some some listings we do through a, a private link and some listings we do through the website where people can view pictures of the store and so on. And it's you know it's all out there and it's it's all of our documentation across the journey as well is all done through the IT platform. So there is no you know, paper signing and scanning of documents. It's all done through Echo Sign. So yep. it's a paper-free environment, but you know, an amazing, an amazing platform and a strong database to back it up. Yeah, and and because I know that the crew from AP Sales have been around the industry for a few years. That the business would possibly be quite young, but but very well known and and very yep. well credited. So if we take that journey to where you are today with the online platform, you know you. You and I would have both been in situations where we've either delivered boxes of information to a prospective buyer or we've um, we've sat with a prospective buyer or a seller and helped them collect boxes of information not that many years ago to to then potentially having information that uh, you can only access in in a room in a solicitor's office and again you're, you're flicking through paperwork to you know data rooms or, or a level of information that might have come through as you said from the email perspective but but really now technology or what technology is done in terms of this has actually put it as I said all into one centralized and secure database that anyone of interest or anyone approved can just go there even with their smartphone these days and, and access this information effectively yeah and as you start to put up a store you know you never everyone's got different questions about stores yeah and so we you'll have a, a perspective by look at a store they'll come back with a question they might say hey can you uh, have you got you know this particular report so you get a copy of that if parties are interested, they click on a keep me updated tab on the site and we get that information and we'll put it into the into the site, into the data pool. And then all the people that have clicked on that tab to ask for updates, you get information to say, hey, Chris just up Chris has just uploaded a new folder. Chris has just uploaded a new report. So that there's so you're not dealing with inquiries one on one. So you don't, okay. you don't you don't have you don't have five people ask for that thing. You, that particular document, for example, so it's yep. it's very it's very informative, it's very responsive, and it really does keep you know all the prospects across all the information, not just you know one person looking at one piece that's not available to another potential purchaser, for example. Yeah, and and it's all instant. And I think the other thing yeah. that came up in a conversation I had the other day was that from a, a purchase sale perspective, you know, often. Um, activity would get held up because we were waiting for a quarter or a half year financial report but with the the advent of technology these days the zeros and the live um, banking and electronic prescribing this all of that information is now instant or current isn't it you're not you're not looking at something that's three or four months old unless you specifically want to yeah that's right and yeah that's 
you keep updating all the time. It's really incredibly responsive. You're not relying on what what version have you got? Yeah, you know, what what was the date of the report you got? You've actually it's it's all live. Yeah. So on that note, Chris, and is, is there some examples? And again, we're not we don't want to breach any kind of confidentiality here, but in terms of the, the technology platform that you use today, I've often found that it throws up different or even new challenges. So if there was a, a pharmacist, you know, that was looking to buy, haven't really dealt in this area before, if it was a pharmacist that's probably only owned one pharmacy and all of a sudden looking to sell, what's some of the things that they might need to be aware of today or, or prepare for? Well, I think having all of your information, you know, together, so you know, a, a, a copy of your lease, making sure that the copy of the lease that you've got is the signed lease as opposed to one of the versions that might have been, you know, sent around in its in its early stages. You know, the reporting yep. is all up to date. I really think that there there's so much information that people need to see. It does take a little bit of time to collate the information. I think in effect it's it's sort of been business ready to sell. And then also you want to put a bit of time into talking about the business so that people can view it because we have a number, a really high number of people who are looking to move states to buy businesses. Okay. So people aren't going to jump on planes all the time to go to from South Australia to Brisbane, for example. But if you go to our listings, we spend a lot of time with quality store photos. We have a the 360 view pictures are done so you can actually pivot around as, and in effect be a virtual tour of a pharmacy. Yep. Great so, technology, yeah. Yeah, and then having having as much information on there as possible. And I think in a pharmacy business today, you, there's so many different things. You know, the the home reviews, the 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 consult rooms, the number of vaccinations. You know, the, these are all critical factors that that play a role in in promoting and and sharing a, as much about what your business is as opposed to the sales figures. Not you know, not just the sales figures. Yep. So, so it's yeah, almost that's, that's, almost becomes like a, a full you know, a real estate offer. It's yes, the the figs, the facts and figures are yeah. important, but what does it look like? What does it feel like? If I'm in the state, do I need to fly there, or can get a, can I get a feel from it using this online technology to see it live, effectively? Yeah, and I, and you AP Group are very aware. You know, the what I love about working with the guys is they're always keen to get better. They're very customer focused. You know, how can we how can we help the transaction go smoother? How can we help the transaction complete quicker? How can we help speed up some of the some of the roadblocks we've experienced? So there's always continual you know innovation being looked at to keep improving a, a strong product already. Yeah. So Chris, you mentioned before the echo sign. So so that's a digital yep. signing process that AP uses. Yep. Yep. Is it is, is there any so other all platform, that, platform so basically or? every yeah oh, Yes, I do. I, I doubt that it would be a standalone, but that's the one that we use. But it's great. You, especially we have multiple businesses that require multiple signatories. Okay. So you know, if you've got a business that's got two or three partners, a document can be uploaded. You can actually select the order of people who you wish to sign. So if it's got to be signed by you, me, and another party, we can go, okay, Chris first, then Scott, then the next person. Every person, can you can see who signed it, who hasn't signed it, where the document's at. So you can you know, really quickly get through a process where everyone can review a document, sign off, go to the next person, done, all, all filed, you know, next part of the process, as opposed to, you know, sending it through, scanning it, someone <laughs> prints it all off, signs yep. one page, rescans it, yep. hang on the page, page 14's not straight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. It's, you've got heart, the top's cut off that page. It, yes, it's a far more professional, far more efficient way of doing uh, sharing of documents that need to be signed off and in sale of business. Obviously, there's, there's quite a few. Streamlined process. That's cool. Chris, I want to jump, jump back. You mentioned a little while ago about a lot of interest from pharmacists looking to purchase interstate. Is this yeah. a business decision? Or I guess the question I'm wondering is that you, know, you and I have seen a lot of people exodus out of Melbourne after our COVID lockdown last year. And, and I know from history, you know, rural or regional pharmacy used to be the place you'd go to buy your first pharmacy, but you got back to the city as quickly as you could. Has that changed now? Are people actually, a pharmacist moving back out to regional areas now? I would think a big part of this current, in the current market is there is a lot of people who want to buy pharmacies. Okay. We have, you know, a lot of, a, a, you know, over 3,000 data on our database. There's wow. A, you know, when when sites are listed, there's a lot of activity. You know, and like I say, we're we're continually surprised by the number of views that we get. You know, across the country, um, yep. and then some states just have you know less opportunities than others. 
Yep. And yeah, I guess if you're a if if you're a young pharmacist looking to buy and you've spent a couple of months looking for one in a particular state and had no success, then I guess the natural next step is to say, hey, are we prepared to move if a good opportunity comes up? Yes. Yeah. Yep. You know, so probably all of that comes down to opportunity. Yeah. And we're, we've done a lot of work where we've got a new model, a new product called Pharmacy Partnership Program, yep. and that's a, a structured program where we can actually blend in a sale of business opportunity in conjunction with a junior partner opportunity okay. and oh, actually yeah. have yeah. a chance for someone who may not want to want to, because currently we deal with people who want to 100% sell or yes. 100% buy. And we want to start having more interaction with people who might want to sell down 20%, for example, yep. but actually build a structured program so everybody knows what's available to get. Well, you know, some person might, they may never want to sell 100%, so they might only ever want to have a 50-50 relationship. Some might yep. be more but actually have a structured program that has independent valuations. But but all of that gets tailored into the, the one package. So we do a sale of business piece and then we assist them with all the legal documentation to set up, you know, a partnership structure, a company structure, a, an agreement on how the next business valuation will be done to compile for a further 10% stake or 20% stake. But it's actually a structured program as opposed to getting the first 20% and then no future discussions are sort of planned, locked in, like a, like a lease with options, I guess. Yeah. So so if I say that back to you, it was pharmacy partnership program. Mm-hmm. And effectively, if there was a, a, a pharmacist, uh, I'm going to say potentially a, a younger pharmacist looking to get into the business, you might be able to match them up with a an older pharmacist who's looking to kind of scale back and, and not actually, where, whereas the pharmacist might have been looking to sell 100%, you're saying, well, actually, hang on, no, you, you keep ownership and then do this transition, which, which is a model that you and I have known for some years, but this is a specific program aimed at getting young pharmacists into businesses effectively. Yeah, and I think I've seen more and more people maybe don't want to be 100% owners. Yep. So some are happy to be 100% owner of a smaller business and manage the whole but some might want to be a part owner of a larger business because they enjoy working with a bigger team or whatever whatever the the business dynamics are. And as you all know, you know the critical part of successful businesses is people. Yes. And if you've got good people in your business, then the conversation may be worthwhile to you know work together going forward, as opposed to potentially if you're not had these discussions, you know that key member of your team may be looking for an opportunity and they may, you know, be successful and, and, and be lost to you, but you're not aware that they're actually interested in being an owner yep. at some point. So, yep. so I guess it's, there's a lot of variations to the model, but we've been doing a lot of work on it. I think you were really comfortable. We've got a great product that's sorted through all of the, the potential issues and challenges that come up. So we're really keen to start rolling that out as well no worries so Chris what I'll do because uh, we're, we're coming to the end of our time but I'll include the AP Sales website which will also have I guess a link or some information on the pharmacy partnership yep. program there'll be links to some of the IT platforms we've chatted to today if someone wanted to get in contact with you I'll include your LinkedIn link but is there is there another is sure. that the best way to get in contact with you or um, or, or they can come direct to you know, Chris at apgroup.com.au yep. we'll include that one as well Mate, that's been great. Chris, it's been great to chat with you again today. I look forward to staying in touch. And uh, I think there's a couple of things that have come out today because it's a discussion that we might be able to chat again in uh, in a month or two's time. So thanks for your time. Yeah. Oh, and thank you for my inaugural <laughs> podcast. It's my pleasure. Uh. Thank you for listening today. Pharmacy View is a technology-focused podcast provided by Melbourne-based business Arian Technologies and Shopfront Solutions. Over the podcast series, our guests include pharmacists, retail managers, wholesalers, suppliers, and industry technology partners. If you would like further information on our podcast series or to participate in one of our episodes, feel free to send me a message or touch base through the Pharmacy View website, pharmacyview.com.au.